Well, guys, I'm I'm kind of excited a little bit. Uh, I've got my solar arcs completed, installed, powered on, and powering my house. Now I have been off grid for a little over 24 hours. I got these put back on. I got these online yesterday. Had a lot going on over the holidays, family, work, different things interfering. Uh, kind of held me up from getting getting this on sooner. But uh, it's all online now, and it's all working. Just kind of give you an overview. This is my master. It's uh, here in Alabama right now. It's 4:30. Not pulling a lot of load in the house, but uh, it's starting to sun's starting to set, so the PV is not putting out a whole lot. So I'm drawing out of my batteries. But this is what it looks like. Wired up. Batteries on this side. PVs. Uh, that's the parallel cable. That is going to my solar assistant. And that is actually working. So I'm kind of excited about that. This little gray cable is for the CTs uh, that come to the master from over here. And I had to splice those wires because they weren't long enough uh, to make it. So I just did an open splice here, tagged it. I'm just gonna let it hang, it's in the clear. Battery wiring coming in here. I still haven't got this rubber piece in here, but I don't have any any wires laying on this at all. This little uh, heck, wire spaghetti, whatever you call it, it's not doing so well. This uh, I've got my ferrites back on. Uh, every now and then you'll hear one of these buzz. I didn't have one big enough for this, so I'm going to have to get my micrometer out here and measure it so I can order two more. But I've got plenty of these extra small ones now. Uh, these two came from Solart for the batteries. These are some I had. But all in all, I don't think it turned out too bad. You hear that little buzz? That's one of these. One of these. I think this one right here buzzing a little bit. I probably may get another one for this. Because that was a little snug on there. I had used those for my battery going into the grow lot. But uh, it's all working. It's in parallel. Took a little while to rewire all this. My grow watts took number six wire. So I had five grow watts with five or four number six wires going to each one plus the grounds. But these solar arcs are each taking five one aught wires because I'm feeding them from two hundred twenty-five amp breakers, and 
then I'm back feeding through 225 amp breakers. Now the bigger wiring made it a little bit more difficult hooking up versus the smaller wiring. In fact, I ended up having to use uh, one of these connection blocks from my neutrals because I just didn't have enough space on bars to connect neutrals up in this box. So I had to connect them down here. And as you can tell, it's a little bit more cluttered. I still got some tidying up to do. Uh, get that sealed up. I just got that to keep the cold air out. And the cold air in. Depends on what time of the year. But I'll I'll do something with that. So I'm going to close this thing up here in a little bit. Um, these covers. Get all this stuff cleaned up. But I'm really excited because the uh, solar system worked right off the bat. Plugged it into the CAN bus battery port. I bought this uh, RS-485 to USB cable from Watch 24-7. They're also the people I bought the um, Raspberry Pi with Solar Assistant preloaded. So I've got both inverters in here. The only difficulty I had, uh, I wanted to hook the battery into this pie as well, but these adapters were so thick that I wasn't able to plug another adapter underneath it. So I had to just use a regular USB cable and come over to a hub that I knew had worked at one time with my GrowWatts. So I have my battery, USB to RS-45 cable plugged in here and here. So I'm actually able to, to look at my, look at my batteries. Well, let's see, the wife must be doing something inside. Maybe she's washing clothes and cooking. That's a pretty good load. You can see at some point today, let's see, that looks about 350 or so. The load peaked probably around 15 and a half kW. So if I'd have been on one Solar 15k, I uh, might would have had a trip. But this is something I have not been able to do when I had the grow watts hooked up. I tried hook, connecting the batteries. Never could get them to work. I don't know what the, I said solar. I meant grow watt. When I had the grow watts, I couldn't see everything. Uh, but now with the batteries, I can actually see each battery pack, each battery. which I haven't been, I wasn't able to do before. I, I don't, I gotta learn and try to understand this data because uh, some of it's not making sense to me. Like, um, for example, cycles, battery one says 65 cycles, battery two says 10 cycles. But I know, uh, I know that can't be accurate I don't think unless these packs aren't numbered according to my dip switch settings I need to go back and check that and that's that's possible I suppose I like to count these then maybe I can figure out which one's which but anyway I'm able to look at the batteries I wasn't able to do that before I got my dashboard. This is uh, this is all working great. All the solar assistant Raspberry Pi connecting cables I got from Ian at Watch 24/7, and it's working good. 
So anyway, I'm, I've got a couple other videos when I was doing the install, how I went through and done it, but I'm online, been off grid for over 24 hours. And we'll see, I haven't put the little plastic cover over the front to make it a, you know, to cover everything up here because I'm gonna let it run a little while, maybe a day or two. Then I'm gonna come in here with a thermal camera catch it when uh, I'm powering everything from the PV so I can scan my PV wires when they're under load and also scan my load cables and my load panel and then when I'm running off batteries and charging the batteries I want to have to scan the battery cables then and so whenever I'm on on the grid, I'll have to scan the grid input. If it doesn't have load, if the grid's sitting there idle, scan it won't do any good. So you gotta have, it's gotta have load on it. Well, not much load on it right there. But the cooling fan kicked on anyway. Well, there's my install. I'm powering my house. Uh, I don't have the, uh, I don't think I have the power view on my laptop. I've got it on my phone. I like the power view. Uh, That's the uh, SolArt software. It's got some good information, shows you a good, bit, a good bit of stuff. The graphics are good. The only problem is it, don't, it doesn't update very often. It's either five or 10 minutes. And if you're trying to look at what's actually going on, it's, you really probably got to use something like Solar Assistant. Uh, Yeah, she must be really doing something in the house. Let's see what this says on load. Yeah, that's four and a half. Four and a half, that's roughly nine kW. And that's about what it's showing over here on Solar Assistant. So it's really pulling out of the battery right now. I got it. I got to coach her some more. All right. I'll post some more videos later of how we actually did the installation, but I'm up and running. I'm pleased with it. I did have to call uh, their tech support twice when I was programming because I couldn't get them to come online initially and uh, I did all kind of research I didn't want to call them but I finally ended up calling them and after I got through talking to them I really wanted to kick myself in the pants for not calling them a couple days sooner would have saved me a lot of time I had to leave a message for them but they called me with back within an hour I told them I was getting a cam bus communication error. I think that was F29 or something like that. Anyway, it turned out the manual, those, those little dip switches right there, the manual called them for them to be all down, but actually they had to be all up. So within 10 minutes of talking with them, I got it back online. I got it online. And then I wanted to be able to pull off my batteries at night. So I wasn't sure how to program that because it started pulling from the grid and I was trying to avoid that I called them back again left a message they called me within an hour and within about 10 minutes they we talked about what I was trying to do they sent me a video that showed me exactly what to do so I got that programmed and it's all working 
And I've got to say, their tech support, the people I talked to, uh, I talked to Emma the first time, Trevor the second time. They knew what they were doing and they helped me solve my problems. And the last company I bought inverters from, when I attempted to call tech support back in July, I think, I had three calls to them in July. I left messages for them three times in July. And I'm still waiting on their return phone call. So it was, uh, it was refreshing to see that Solark's tech support actually calls you back. So at any rate, I want to give another shout out to uh, Engineer 775, Scott Hunt, who I bought these inverters from and also purchased the big wire away from and also purchased my Sinclair ground mount so there you go enjoy your day